Hello, hello. So today started the masculine initiation. Uh, I have been writing a book, going through my own process, writing a book about that. And I realized I wanted to start sharing uh, what I was experiencing and intentionally taking people through a masculine initiation. And I'm going to share today a little bit about why this is so important right now, why it's so timely, why it feels very relevant for me, for the collective, for the people that are going through this process, um, and a little bit about where the first person that I started with today is at. So you can get an idea of like real tangible people about why this is important and what this means and what this look that looks like and what you may be experiencing if you're feeling um, some of these things that she, maybe she was, um, just maybe they resonate, right? It helps to hear other people's examples and experiences to give us something to connect to and feel like, oh yeah, I'm going through that too and to find some tools that might be helpful. So uh, first of all, it's been a long process for me. It's been months of ongoing shifts and changes and weirdness and feeling uh, for me personally, like I couldn't really make decisions, like I couldn't get traction, like I'd have a really good day and feel really high and excited and like, I got this, I could do this. And then like a day or two later, it's like, no, nah, I don't know and I'm not sure. And it's different than those of you that are in human design, it's a little bit different than my, um, my emotional wave as an emotional authority. 50% um, of the population has that type of a natural wave with our emotions, but it felt different than that. It felt very much like I just couldn't get, stay focused. I couldn't find clear direction. Like I couldn't get the, the grip on things, get the traction to be able to really continue to move forward and do the things that I knew I wanted to do. Or sometimes it felt like I was overwhelmed with ideas and inspiration and like maybes, maybe this would be work cool. Maybe this would work. Maybe this is great. Maybe this is, maybe this. And it, it, it just left me in a place of being ultimately feeling very frustrated, feeling very unclear and unsure and confused. Um, just feeling a lot of ups and downs. So I started going through and journaling a lot more for a few months and I started to notice the themes that were coming up and I started to notice uh, and take note of what was going on in the collective and in the world because everything is a mirror. So sometimes it's easy for me to see what's going on for myself individually, specifically, and I can take what I'm experiencing and then expand that into what the collective is experiencing. And sometimes the reverse is a little bit easier. Sometimes it's easier to look at what's going on externally and use it as a mirror. What is going on maybe across the world, maybe it's in your community, maybe it's in your at your workplace or in your relationships or in parenting. And you start to, with this big wide, a uh, big huge mirror and look at the themes and look at the the incidences and the occurrences and you start to be able to get it like funnel it down to oh and this is what this looks like for me and sometimes it works the other way where we start with the very specific very personal what is personal is universal this is why this works because everything external is a mirror for what's going on internally so as I was feeling frustrated for myself, I started to look at what's going on externally. What are we experiencing? Um, the world's kind of been in a very big place, <laughs> very um, place of upheaval, place of change, place of fear, place of, of confusion and overwhelm over the past six months specifically uh, when I was going through this. And I started to notice that there's this theme around masculinity and the masculine energy um, and what that means. A lot of patriarchy talk, a lot of the politics, a lot of the government, the, the pieces that are the power, the control, the structures and systems, um, the, the supposed guidance that we are being given and shown and receiving and Essentially, that's masculine. That's the masculine energy is our systems and structures, our support, our guidance, our um, our our power, our control, our decision making is that masculine energy, and <laughs> uh, it hasn't been so great lately. <laughs> it's it's um. Ultimately, the systems and structures and guidance and support coming from the masculine is meant to be something that 
allows us to feel protected and safe allows us to feel very clear, very very taken care of. And that's not what we're experiencing in the world. Um, I don't think anybody feels fully safe. And we all have our own reasons and perspectives and ideas. Uh, there's too much fear. And living at th- that survival mode is a result of feeling unsafe, feeling unprotected, feeling insecure or unsecure in our life. And that means the masculine is not doing its job. If the masculine is not doing its job, it's because it is in a deeply conditioned state, in an immature state, in a place where it is disempowered, um, and it's not being fully embodied and understood. Its true potential isn't being expressed and experienced. So by looking at that, the bigger themes, I was able to come back into my own self, right? Take that big concept of the collective, of the world, of, of what we're seeing publicly and bring it back personal and look at what was I experiencing and see this process of what it meant to initiate the masculine, what it meant, right? I'm taking this and making it very personal and going through the personal process of initiating the masculine energy within myself, initiating and maturing the decision-making, the guidance, the support, the protectiveness, the safety, the security, the stability, the systems and structures, the decision-making, the clarity of vision, the intelligence and ability to clearly communicate and the ability to express love and ultimate support for myself and for those around me that I'm impacting. And this process evolved. I'm an emotional uh, clearing practitioner. So I took what I was seeing and experiencing and attached it to some very specific themes and archetypes and created this emotional clearing process. So today was the first day that I started taking clients through this specific process to help them initiate and mature and more deeply embody their own masculine energy. And it was epically amazing of course it was right I took myself through it and I realized I want I want to see what else this does for other people because I started to see the drastic changes it was having in my own life in feeling safe and feeling secure and feeling protected and feeling decisive and clear and vision and purpose reattaching to and reconnecting to my purpose and my direction and being able to get traction and make decisions and do things and to show up differently, to show up more grounded, to clearly communicate more effectively. I I don't know if you've noticed lately, if you've been around a while, there's been a lot of things that I have been accomplishing over the past few months because of the work that I did through myself, through this emotional clearing process. So I started taking clients through it. I made the announcement that I said, hey, I want to bring people through this. I'm writing a book about it and about what this means and what the masculine is going through and why this evolution is necessary. We've had a big rise in the feminine. We've had so much um, moving and, and so beautifully breaking free and expressing, but we will plateau. We will hit a mark where the feminine cannot go any further and cannot express further because the masculine isn't there to match that, support that. We need both. So the feminine has broken and has uh, broken free and become very vocal and expressing and, and, and breaking out of a lot of the oppression and repression. And it's beautiful and it's amazing. And there's so much passion, so much ideas. And we need the masculine to mature with it, to be able to guide it forward. So um, I wanted to take other people through it. I wanted to see what is this like for other people? What are the tangible pieces that happen when you do feel this process occurring within yourself and when you allow yourself to embody it and integrate what is happening on a collective level very personally? So today was day one. Today was the start. I do have two more spaces that are open still. So and I'm leaving that open for the rest of this month. So if you're feeling called, speak up uh, or forever hold your peace. Uh, but today was day one of the first client to get started and going through the process. And it was, of course, so beautifully timed for what she's experiencing in her life and in her own relationships. And she was expressing a lot of the same things that I was, that she was feeling like, I used to be so confident. I used to have so much traction. I used to get so much done. And then the pandemic hit and <laughs> kind of all hell broke loose. You know, and and I want to get back to that. I want to feel confident again. I want to be able to get tangible results and take action and get shit done. I want to feel really good about it. Um, She said she's having a lot of um, past traumas coming up or triggers really at the forefront. Things that she thought she was okay with that it's coming up more and more on a whole new level. She was experiencing how 
she's like, I'm having trouble really like making a decision and taking action on it. I've got all these ideas, all these things I want to do. I want to, you know, write a book, start a podcast, do this coaching program, um, go further in my relationship and, and take this to the next level and really dive deeper into that, um, do more with my kids, all these things I want to do. And I'm not, I'm not doing them. I don't feel quite as confident. I don't feel clear. I don't have the ability to make that decisive action. I, there's no traction. I'm just kind of in this state of overwhelm, excitement, feel great one day, not so great the next day. And I was, of course was like, I know I felt the same way. So I get it. Um, and it was so beautiful to get her started in this process and just start looking at, right, for the first month we focus on masculine and masculinity. That's where we spend our first month. The second month we start to look at the archetype of the jester or the fool. Um, and for me personally, I don't ever wanna look like a fool. It's one of those things that I uh, struggle with the most and have constantly uh, felt the emotional ties to. And then the third month we take a look at the archetype of the king. And as we, it's very specifically designed to walk you through this process and to be about embodiment and integration and shifting your relationship. And of course, in this call, as much as we're focusing on the masculine, a lot of our conversation was about the feminine as well and what she's experiencing with the feminine and how her feminine has felt um, very hurt, very abandoned, rejected, or... Um, just her boundaries crossed or oppressed or repressed or ignored over the years over her life which a lot of us can relate to different experiences like that where the feminine closes the feminine basically says I'm gonna throw my middle finger up and say f you because I don't want to get hurt again and you can't handle me and that's not okay and we shut down a big part of ourselves and we no longer allow things to come in and when we don't allow anything to come in, we keep the masculine out and what it really can do and how it can support us. What we deeply desire as a feminine and in the feminine energy is for a very powerful, embodied, grounded, supportive, strong masculine energy. The feminine craves that masculine and the masculine craves the empowered feminine. It's a, a duality that is also a polarity that is also about wholeness and oneness. So yes, we were focused on the masculine, but we were also looking at her feminine and where she is injured, where she's wounded, where she's been hurt by the masculine, by the world, by her conditioning about what the masculine means. And one of the biggest things that I know I connected with was how if she let the masculine come in, so for instance, if she were to pursue, pursue a relationship with someone or um, allow a relationship to progress to a certain point, a romantic relationship, that she'd end up alone. Eventually he'd leave. Eventually she would be rejected and she'd be hurt. And so the masculine, her own masculine, has not been allowed to come in and support her and help her be decisive and be action taking and oriented and be cared for and have systems and structures in place that support what her feminine is so lit up about in life right now, but the feminine won't allow it in because she's been hurt. And so it was this big, beautiful process today focused on getting clear on what the masculine means to her, what she's been conditioned about it, what she's experienced about the masculine um, and what it means to her feminine and what it means to her experiences. And the last portions that we were working on were about what, what it would look like if the masculine came in, like the true masculine, her soul knows what the masculine is. Her soul knows what is possible when the masculine is fully embodied. She, our soul craves it. We crave that beautiful mix and duality and polarity and oneness and wholeness of, of that masculine and feminine maturing and growing together and fully supporting each other. We crave that. Our soul knows that. And getting her to, through a visualization and a meditation, to sit down and feel what that would be like if that masculine came in. That masculine doesn't leave. That masculine doesn't reject the feminine. That masculine doesn't push past the feminine's boundaries and neglect her or neglect to see her or... Um, abandon her in any way that masculine is there to support and stay 
that masculine is there to hold the space to protect and be safe and secure and stable. If you allow that masculine to come into your life, what does that do for you? What does that feel like? What does that change? What does that allow you to really expand into? And I know it's really scary. The feminine has to choose to open and allow that masculine to come in. But the masculine that's truly embodied will wait and will not rush. The feminine has to be the one to choose to open and let it in. But she won't do that until she feels safe. So it's a rebuilding of trust. And it is a testing of the waters. And it is a test of the masculine again and again. Are you sure I'm safe? Are you sure I'm safe? Are you sure you can handle me? Are you sure you can handle me? Are you really gonna stay? And that's this beautiful, amazing softening and opening that happens when the masculine does stay and when he can hold and when he can be patient. When he's not rushing her and he's not pushing her, she opens and it becomes this beautiful experience between the two of them to create life together. Like that's literally sexual reproduction, but also creating our lives and relationships together, creating what we're experiencing on a daily basis, creating what you're experiencing in your life. So this work is important and it's very timely. The world right now is in a lot of chaos because the feminine has erupted and broken free and we're waiting for the masculine to mature the fuck up. <laughs> we are waiting for true leadership to arise, true support, guidance systems that are inclusive and abundantly secure and safe and protective uh, for the feminine. We're waiting for that and we cannot rise anymore until we have that. Um, it's It just isn't possible. She's not going to open more. She's not going to be as creative or as powerful, as passionate or as um, just incredibly epic as she could be without that there. So we're in that space right now where we're seeing, ah, masculine has some issues. Here's how we shift it. Here's how we change it. We work on ourselves individually and as we do that, it starts to ripple out and we start to see the changes. We're waiting for the masculine to mature. We're waiting for the masculine to be more deeply embodied. We're waiting for him to stop, op stop operating out of fear, to stop op operating out of a space of, um, of control and oppression and re repression. We're waiting for the masculine to really rise in its own new evolution and the process that I have took my, taken myself through and I'm now taking clients through is a part of how that happens. I'm not the only one doing this type of work, but I am super in love with the way this process has unfolded and the emotional clearing that's involved in this in doing the emotional and energetic work within men and women to allow the masculine to become more initiated because it's kind of what our world needs. And we're being forced down that path. So um, in evolutionary terms, you either evolve or die. That's how evolution works. Uh, it's a long time period. Evolution takes a long time, um, but that's what we're experiencing. So those that are struggling right now, you're probably feeling a lot of things I've been talking about. You're feeling um, on either side of the masculine or the feminine. You're feeling the fear. You're feeling the um, fear of, of loss of control, feel, fear, the fear of being in confusion or being abandoned in, in your own ways. Um, but that's why this work is important and that's why it's something that's coming through now and is being talked about more. And I hope you can see how this is playing out as the world and then collectively, but also more importantly, personally for you and what you're experiencing and creating. And the only way to change the world that we are living in is to start by changing ourselves so that we can then move forward and start to share that and impact others and the world around us in a much more positive and supportive way. And this masculine change is big, it's powerful. It is something that I full wholeheartedly and fully believe men and women need to go through and experience themselves. We all have masculine and feminine energy within us. So if you're interested in uh, your own masculine initiation, send me a DM. 
uh, send me a message, send me an email so we can chat about it. I do have a couple spaces open just for this first round. These are the ones that are going to be uh, featured in the book um, and going to be receiving their own copy of the book when it does come out later this year, talking about this initiation process um, so that the rest of the world can hopefully have more exposure to it and start stepping into it themselves so we can start to see some really big changes because it's needed. <laughs> we need the masculine to evolve and start to grow and mature in an, in itself in a supportive way. And it's ve this very cool process. I had someone question things the other day about um, on a post. And one of the comments I made back was that there are aspects of the masculine that are not stimulated until it is until it encounters a more powerful feminine and more embodied feminine. And there are aspects of the feminine that do not evolve until they've experienced a more evolved and mature um, aspect of the masculine. They are stimulating each other and helping each other grow and evolve. This is the process we're in the middle of. The feminine has started to rise and evolve and stand on her own and really be all that she is. And she is demanding that the masculine rise and stimulating and poking and provoking within the masculine these areas where it needs to evolve and grow. So you're probably experiencing this in your own personal life. And we're definitely seeing this on a big scale in our lives as a whole. So, um, yeah. This is big stuff. This is why a lot of the stuff that is going on and why we're experiencing it this way. And I hope you can start to see that and understand that. So if you're interested in your own masculine initiation and evolution, send me a message. Happy to get you into this round. If not this round, then the next round. Um, and I do have another opportunity that I announced yesterday with my app that is going to be launched sometime in the next few months. If you want to be a founding member of that and go through that process and uh, have some bonuses and, and a live group coaching program to make it happen in your life, whatever it is that you are looking to achieve and feel like you want the motivation and confidence and beliefs to be able to do it in 30 days. Um, that's just a little side note drop there too. You can message me about that too. Those are for the those that want to be the founding members of the Oracle in a Hoodie app. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Have a fantastic rest of your day. Be fierce about who you are and what you desire. And I will talk to you soon. See ya.